Whenever you come to Orkney, you share in the incredible journey taken by its peoples through nearly 6,000 years. Welcome, time traveller. Ten thousand years ago, the end of the last ice age. No human life in these parts then. But wait a mere two thousand years. As the climate begins to warm, there are the first signs of people moving north. This simple farmstead on the island of Papa Westry is believed to be the oldest standing house in northwest Europe, a thousand years older than the first pyramids of Egypt. Our earliest inhabitants left their mark with distinctive settlements and dramatic stone circles. Neolithic sites like these have gained Orkney UNESCO World Heritage status. When the sun sets, the mysteries of early Orkney civilizations deepen. Fast forward another two to three thousand years to the Iron Age. Life was far less peaceful. This was the age of the Broch, a mini fortress. Over a hundred of these have been found in Orkney. Fast forward again to the 9th century and Orkney was becoming a new home for the Vikings. Marauding ever southwards, they brought a new language. In time, we became part of the Scandinavian world. The Norsemen adopted Christianity. Churches were built on many of the islands, including this one in Aglesey. Here, nine centuries ago, Earl Magnus and his rival cousin Earl Hakon met to settle their differences. Magnus was martyred. He became patron saint of Orkney. His followers began building a cathedral in Kirkwall. It took 400 years to build what we see now. Today, St Magnus Cathedral is the spiritual heart of the islands. This kirk belongs to the people. Every summer, we welcome our North Sea neighbours and join with them in a celebration of their nationhood, remembering that 500 years ago, these islands were part of a Norwegian kingdom. Then, in 1468, we became part of Scotland. King James III declared Kirkwall a royal borough. Every year, with much ceremony, we are pleased to celebrate that honour. Times were difficult during the 16th and 17th centuries. The people suffered from extortion, oppression and forced labour at the hands of the very privileged Earls of Orkney. Eighteenth century Strumness was a busy place. The harbour was favoured by mariners as a last port of call and voyages to the New World and in search of whatever might lie beyond. Workers would also be recruited for the newly formed Hudson's Bay Company in Canada. Most famous of these was Dr John Ray. His explorations charted much of the Canadian Arctic coastline. The hostile Arctic seas were the destination of whaling fleets. Many Arcadians would become crew on these ships when they called in to Strumness. The great herring fishery of the 19th century saw as many as 500 boats berthed here, the quaysides thronged with lasses gutting and packing the fish. As shipping around Orkney increased, so were there disasters. Lighthouses were built to warn vessels. Some of the earliest and tallest structures can be found on these islands. Our great maritime history is never far from view. Martello Towers were built towards the end of the Napoleonic War. 
the sheltered waters of Scapa Flow became a base for the British Navy in the First World War. When the war ended, the German High Seas Fleet was interned here. The German commander secretly ordered the ships to be scuttled. In the early 1930s, the first air services began to link these islands to the Scottish mainland. Small aircraft brought a sprinkling of passengers and air mail became an important part of business life on the islands. During the Second World War, Orkney became an enormous fortress for tens of thousands of soldiers, sailors and airmen. Once again, Scapa Flow was a strategic base, an ideal, impenetrable location where ships could assemble before heading to escort vital Atlantic convoys. Here, they were protected, so everyone hoped, by the scuttled First World War block ships. In late 1939, a German U-boat slipped undetected into Scapa Flow. HMS Royal Oak was sunk by a salvo of torpedoes. 834 men perished. They are remembered each day in this Book of Remembrance in St Magnus Cathedral. In 1940, Winston Churchill authorised the building of road barriers across the four sea channels. Many hundreds of Italian prisoners of war were detailed to aid in this civilian project and which also enabled our southerly islands to be linked to mainland. This tiny chapel on Lamholm, intricately and ingeniously wrought out of two Nissen huts and scrap materials, remains a powerful memorial to the Italian contribution. Here at Linus on the island of Hoi, the role of this former Royal Navy fuel pumping station is vividly recalled. Relics of the German High Seas Fleet from 1919. Vehicles and military equipment from the Second World War, a time when the area around here was home to more than 20,000 servicemen and women. The wartime years, as well as all the decades that followed, are also remembered here at the Orkney Wireless Museum. It's the result of one man's passion for communications. The wireless, the transistor radio, and even an amateur radio station, bringing back memories for many of us. Towards the end of the 1970s, the islands got their own local radio station. Hello, a very good morning and welcome to Rowd Orkney from the BBC. It's Wednesday the 9th of October. In the 1970s, it had become easier to travel quickly between the islands. These eight-seat islander aircraft, operated by the Scottish airline Logan Air, soon became the aerial workhorse. A vital link for anyone, indeed anything, needed on one of our remoter islands. For many years, Orkney has had the unique distinction of the world's shortest scheduled air service. Westry to Papa Westry, distance one and a half miles, flight time two minutes. A hundred miles southeast of Orkney, the North Sea had become the major focus of exploration for oil. The Piper oil field was discovered in 1973 and four years later, the first oil arrived here on the island of Flotta. Once again, the deep waters of Scapa Flow would provide the shelter essential for the tankers to load oil and gas for export. Around us, the waves. Exciting new opportunities in the 21st century for Orkney. In these waters are enormous wave and tidal resources and world-class test facilities and expertise in marine renewables are based here. From the Ice Age to the Energy Age, welcome time traveller to Orkney. It's much more than you'd imagine.